going into the holidays like a bat out of hell. This is episode number 54 of the Weekendology podcast. Weekendology is the only podcast with the hottest takes, the best talking points, and the stories to spark your weekend conversations. So for everything related to all the best topics from music, movies, sports, food, and more, we've got you covered. I'll be your gaffer for for today, Will Dichley, alongside the greatest thing since sliced bread itself, Aaron Berg. What's up, Aaron? You pumped for uh, Thanksgiving next week? I am now with that amazing intro. You should be. I wow. always give you the best intros is, is, out of all time with these podcasts. So better to hell. It's a little outdated. It's Halloween. That's, nah, it's gotta, never gotta, outdated. We need, we need like a all right, like a like a turkey carved up turkey or something. Turkey like gobbling down, getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner or something. I don't know. Oh, well, something. I, like I don't that. know how turkeys get ready for Thanksgiving dinner. They brace themselves. Uh, they brace themselves for. The death, <laughs> and then we eat them. So, well, that's or, or or maybe they that's they don't know they're gonna die. They're just they're just happy because they're eating a lot, and they're like, oh, this is great. And then yeah, they get then they are just you know in a in a big room with all their buddies, and like, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's too happening good to be here. True. Hold was, on, here. I was getting double feed for yeah a lot of bad reasons. Well, we're happy to uh, have Thanksgiving next week. Got any plans coming up here? Yes. Um, what are you doing? I am traveling, which apparently, like, everyone's going to kill me for doing, uh, at least on Facebook. Oh, how dare you? I was reading, and Twitter and all his uh, social media sites. Yes. I was reading all the, just the guilt trip. You know, people are already hopping on that, and just, if you're traveling, ugh, they're getting all weird. But it's <laughs> you're like, the worst maybe, person alive, Leave Aaron. me alone, man. Like, I mean, do whatever you want, yeah. I guess. Just Heading out to uh, Maryland, which actually today just released all these new restrictions so <laughs> nothing to give oh myself a heart attack right before i leave for uh there you go maryland there but no it's just like bar restriction stuff i don't well, do that anyway there's so. no you know, the only people in maryland are your parents anyway so it's not like you're going out to yeah hit the bars or i don't know no do whatever thing we're not we're not they partying down like that <laughs> gonna eat gonna watch football um uh, gonna play some some games there you go yeah um no, it's just it's gonna be chill. I, I I love Thanksgiving. I've I've said it before. It's my second favorite holiday. So Thanksgiving is a pretty great I'm holiday. I'm excited to go back up to St. Louis and uh, spend some time with the family. And so you're traveling too. Out. You're gonna you're gonna get the guilt trip. Uh, I am, but I'm driving, so I'm not I'm not flying. So I'm uh, not. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm flying first class. Oh, yeah. you're flying first yeah, class. Yeah, you know I do it. Big man on campus over here. Big baller. All that weekendology money coming. You in. want to uh, share some of that uh, those points with me or something to. Uh, <laughs> Pay for my trip then, because that'd be that'd be fantastic. Better than driving eight hours back to back home. It's called Grandpa's Wallet. And those are the points. <laughs> <laughs> Old Grandpa's Wallet. Well, we want to thank all of our returning listeners for joining us this week. And if you're new to the show, welcome. The show is all about changing, improving, and making things better as we cover all the best topics from around the pop culture and the sports world. Weekendology is brought to you by The Big Red World. Go check out some of the great podcasts they produce, like The House That Rick Built and Six Drunk, One Sober. They're up on Twitter at Big Red Social, and their website is BigRedWorld.org. I do have to give a shout-out to uh, House That Rick Built because their latest episode, well, actually not the latest, um, because that was with Tremaine Isabel, but the one before that, their description... I literally just laughing out loud. <laughs> what was the description? There's just not a lot to talk about. Period. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's really not. Uh, I, I just I love the effort. Hey, at least you recorded an episode and put a description in there. There's not. There's that's, not a ton to. to... I, I, we need to make an episode where we just do. It. You know what? There's nothing to say, but we still record. <laughs> yeah, you know, we should just do. We don't it totally have any off change this week, but we're just gonna talk. Yes, that would be a great thing that's, to do. That's a kind of you know just blue collar lunch pail effort you're gonna get at the big red world <laughs> with the family of podcasts oh, we're man. showing up anyway i mean there's not a whole lot going on especially right now when their whole entire podcast is about college basketball and slew and there's really none of that happening yeah. and uh there's not even a schedule and college is, basketball starts in like two weeks no there's this is the dead time of the year but uh what's not dead is checking out our web page over at the big red world's website for links to our social handles, our episodes, and even blogs about our latest content. Go show your love and support for the show as well by following our social handles to keep up to date with all things changing from music, movies, sports, video games, food, everything related to pop culture. We've got you covered on our main Twitter at Weekendology Pod and wherever you listen to podcasts. For all things sports related, check out our sports handle at Weekendology Sports. And to stay entertained, our entertainment handle is at Weekendology ENT. And for those who don't use Twitter, 
Go check out our Facebook page. We've got uh, snippets and sneak peeks to our brand new episodes each week and uh, links to all of our episodes as well. So there's nothing bad about Facebook. So now that the election's over. The, oh, no, the, it's great again. I know. It's, it's, it's great the place again. to yeah. be. Make Facebook, make Facebook great again. That's, <laughs> uh, that's the slogan is what it should be. So, But as you listen to this week's episode, make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spreaker, just, wherever you're just listening right, to the podcast. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> five stars or yeah. you know, that's how you do it. Just hit five stars and that's the end of it. And uh yeah, it really shows their support and helps us grow and uh makes us uh aware that we're doing something right on the podcast and it makes us fly first class. That's what it, it makes Aaron fly first class and I still have to drive, so <laughs> Aaron gets Aaron gets Peasants. paid all the big bucks. I do. You do. But uh yeah. So we're moving on to our pick of the week this week. Uh, Aaron, what's your pick of the week? Do you have one set? I do. Uh, oh, it, boy. Yeah. It, it's just funny, speaking of uh, non-peasants, because I'm a Disney Plus guy now. You know, I'm filthy rich. You are Last rich Last year, now. I was not Disney Plus guy. i too poor for that. Oh, you, you might be too poor for, for Hulu soon because they're raising the price, so you might Disney Plus might be your only <laughs> yeah, go-to now. I don't know what I'm going to do. But Baker, man, my boy is doing the Hulu commercial still. Oh, which, geez. First of all, here's here's a pick of the week for you. Um, <laughs> this is an unofficial pick of the week. Here we go. I was just thinking about this. What bad luck. You know, they did the their commercial where they're doing like the – you know, the big heads and little bodies. You saw that, Yeah, right? I saw that, yeah. Baker and Saquon Barkley. Yep. What awful, like, man, someone really screwed up with there. You picked a guy who's having a terrible season, but, you know, he's still Baker Mayfield, so whatever. <laughs> and you also picked a guy who blew out his knee the first game of the season. I mean. That's just rough. Didn't they pick those, like, after, like before this all happened? Well, yeah, of course. But so like, there's no way still, they could have predicted no, that. No, it's just but... terrible luck, though, because they have to show those all season. I mean, and it's like rough. you're watching <laughs> – you're watching an ad with like people that just don't need to be in <laughs> So is your pick of the week a commercial or that's unofficial pick of the week. Unofficial, unofficial pick of the week. Pick of a the week. bonus one. Bonus one. Disney yeah. Plus. It is the right stuff. Have okay. you seen this? I have not seen it. No. Have you seen the movie? From no. I've never heard of this. No. no. Uh have you read the book? <laughs> no, I've never heard of it. So. <laughs> a lot of, I, I didn't even know it was all that stuff. But yeah, it's about um the space program in the early sixties, like Ooh. the first time they were going up to space. I love space. So my boy John Glenn. Okay. Um all the other astronauts. And it's it's really good. Well made. Um very Disney fied. It's actually National Geographic is a part in it, which I found interesting, but Well, Disney owns National Geographic, so Right. Yeah, yeah but it's it's like it definitely feels like you're watching a Disney, you know, it's kind of family friendly i would say okay uh, which i like though you know i i like because so my former pick of the week was away a while ago back that was a good show but uh, i'm not yeah, i lost i lost interest. I, I did lose interest after like I got, four episodes yeah like, yeah yeah I, I got like i think i got to the third one and i was like you know what this isn't as good as i thought well and, neither did netflix think think that was good because they got canceled so that shows right no no true. more well i didn't finish i, I want to finish it because i want to see if they made it to mars but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I but don't, I don't know if they did. It's so cheesy, and this is a problem I have with a lot of space shows, and why I like the right stuff. It's not cheesy. It's very. It, they do a good job with like historically accurate, but still entertaining, but not too much of anything. Okay. So go check it out. It's a uh, it's it's a fun fun watch, quick watch, um, and I mean, hey. Young John Glenn, man, that guy's there. You go, that guy's a beast. I'll be sure to check it out on, on Disney US Plus. Marine, I'll have plenty oldest of, man ever in space. Uh, I'll have plenty of time to uh, watch lots of different shows over the next couple weeks here. So I have there some time off for Thanksgiving next week. So and shout out Cue to uh, all the astronauts that went up in Elon Musk's rocket. Yeah, they did. Was four astronauts or something that just yeah. got sent up there? First, uh, first black guy on the International Space Station. I nice. believe he's from Dallas too. All right, so, all right, represent. Yeah. There we go. Yeehaw. Oh, that's awesome. Well, my pick of the week is a uh, another podcast this week. Uh, oh yeah, you're full of them. It's a brand new podcast that just was released by the Paragon Collective. They're a publishing company, but uh, it's like a docu. Uh, well, not a docu. It's like a drama podcast again. It's called The Oyster. But it's got a really, really great uh, all-star voice cast uh, with uh, Carlo Gugino from The Har- Haunting of Bly Manor, uh, Giancarlo Esposito Ooh. from uh, Breaking yes. Bad and The Boys. And um, Mandalorian. And Mandalorian as well. 
Um, Logan Browning is from Dear White People, which is a really, really good show. So it's got a really, really great cast and everything, but it's it's like a sci-fi series and stuff, and it takes place in 2050, and people have to, I guess... Uh, it's only 30 years. That's not that far. It's not that far, <laughs> but uh, like 80% of the Earth's uh, atmosphere becomes on... You can't like you can't live above above ground, so it's like really really polluted. fascinating. There's only two episodes out right now. But, Al Gore uh, produces. No, it's not Al Gore, oh, but it's like damn. a post apocalyptic uh, sci fi type of podcast. That's like a drama acted out thing, but it's, I it's really really good. I, you know, I actually I do watch a lot of your pick of the weeks, but I haven't listened to the podcast suggestions. I'm so curious. I want to listen to those because. I haven't listened to a podcast that's like a like a radio show. I, that's what I was compared to because yeah. that's what I've heard before, you know. And that just sounds so interesting how it's like there's episodes and it's, it's like the old timey, you know, listen to the radio and these dramas, you know. I mean, this is literally. I didn't know celebrities were doing voiceovers. Oh yeah, things. this is a it's very crazy. very great cast, and this is almost like a movie that's act just yeah just like a podcast version of it. So or I like, highly uh, recommend this. And what's the uh, you know like Audible like a. Yeah, it's like an audio book. Audio book, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. So, but yeah, it is it is really really fascinating. And the first two episodes, they're about only about thirty forty minutes each, so they're pretty quick. That's a sweet spot. For that me. is the sweet spot, uh, but they're not long enough in my opinion. So yeah. we need. Uh, well, they're not weekendology. Well, so. they're not weekendology, but uh, that's my pick of the week. It is a great podcast. Uh, check it out because it is. It is I'm just awesome. gonna picture Gus Fring though whenever he talks. <laughs> well, Giancarlo Hello, Esposito plays like chicken. this. Like super serious, like mysterious guy. Yeah, of course. He always uh, plays like the villain and everything, and he's, he's so such a good that. villain and everything. And there's there's so many other great voices that you'll recognize, but you'll be like, "This guy's in it." Yeah, I never would have guessed because you only recognize them by their voice, mm-hmm. and it's it's very surprising and it's uh, it's a welcome surprise with uh, some of the other. I won't spoil some of the other guest celebrity stars that are in it, but it's Jamie uh, Kennedy. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dang. I don't even think I know who that is. So. Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh, <laughs> nope, not definitely not him. <laughs> Dang. If he is, then he's not credited. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's credited. In my no, he's it's not. like, hey, Jamie, we're because uh, you'll do anything. You'll be on this, but we're not going to credit you because we want to keep our credibility. So. <laughs> but you know, still do it. You're not doing anything else. Just hop on. Exactly. And he'll be like, sure, yeah, you're right. I'm not. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, you never cease to amuse me, Aaron. So. That's We're moving on to our main episode now. So Hollywood's more have like a fascination with remakes, sequels, and unoriginal content, but lately they've kind of ventured off into a new realm of movie making. Um, it kind of go. This episode is kind of going to go off of our previous episodes of is Hollywood boring and TV show revivals and even movies we'd like to see remakes of or sequels of as well. We're just loading up the Weekendology and yes. feed for you. Yes, the we, the Weekendology E N T uh, social handle, but. Uh, there's a lot of live action adaptation movies that have been going around. That's kind of the, I guess, theme or the popular trend for Hollywood in the last couple of years to do this, mainly from original animated content, but even as far as video games to toys to even board games and everything. So we figured we go trend into our episode of uh, our mini series of entertainment, I should say, taking a look at how all the live action adaptations are affecting movie making in Hollywood and take take you down some some memory lanes of uh of these movies and we'll regale our yeah, best I didn't, moments i didn't realize and... how many it's amazing when you look at a list you know wow there's a ton I mean, it's been going on for a while ending. though that's that's the thing it seems like it's a new thing but it's it's been a pretty consistent thing for i would say 20 years yeah i mean it started back in like the the trend really really started back in i guess like 2010 with disney remaking all of mm-hmm. their uh, animated movies, and I guess once they realized that they couldn't recreate the magic of their older animated films, and they realized that people live in nostalgia from their youth. Well, and they could kind of uh, make them adult, you know, and make them more suitable for the audience that might have grown up watching those animated ones, and then make them more like suitable, you know, suitable for adults. You know, yeah, bringing up age to appropriate relevancy mm-hmm. in in modern times. You don't feel goofy and... watching a cartoon because it's. You can justify watching, like, Dumbo, you know? Because, hey, Danny DeVito's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Danny DeVito's in that movie? Yeah. 
I never saw that yeah, the he's live really action good one. So, but yeah, we're gonna go through our list. We'll tell you some of the the best ones, and then we're gonna go through and show you how it's changing movie making, changing Hollywood, what it means for the future of the industry, so on and so forth. So, um, we'll start off. There's 23 live action Disney films, either made or in the works to be made in the next couple years. Mm. Um, the first one to start off was Alice in Wonderland in 2010. Did you see this movie? No, I remember the previews though. Okay, I'm not a big Alice in Wonderland fan, so I mean it had a it had a sequel in 2016 as well, and oh. it did really really well. Alice through the Looking Glass is what it's oh, called. Okay, yeah, but, I remember. I remember yeah. these coming out. Yeah, it's, I mean they promote them like crazy. Yeah, you've got the the Mad Hatter, and you've got Johnny uh, Depp's in it. Johnny Depp is in he's it. The, isn't he the cat? Or he no, he's is, the Mad Hatter. He is the Mad yeah. Hatter. Then you've always got uh, Helen and Bottom Carter in it, who plays the evil queen. Oh. Um. And I feel like Johnny Depp and Helen Bonham Carter in like yeah, every I, movie together. What did I watch? Uh, it was so bad. Uh, if we have an anti pick of the week, I'm going to put this on there. <laughs> an anti pick. Um, it's uh, it's like like it's like Edward Scissorhands, but not, and it's newer. Tim Burton. Um, what am I thinking of? Will was it Sweeney Todd? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, that movie sucks. <laughs> Don't watch that movie. If you oh, it's terrible. Freaking Borat's in it. Oh, Sasha Barry Cohen's in it? Yeah, he gets Dang. killed. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. I don't even care. It's a spoiler alert because you shouldn't be watching. I know. I it's so bad, and it's a it's a musical. I didn't know that. Oh, I'm thinking it'll be cool because I like Johnny Depp. Like it's I know, I know he's getting some heat right now. <laughs> but like I, as an actor, I like him. I yeah, mean, but like and Tim Burton, you know, he's he's okay. He's kind of weird. He's like a Quentin Tarantino for me, where you you got to know what you're getting yourself into, and then you'll That's enjoy true. it. Yeah, all but, of his movies man, are very got a very bad. dark gothic weird kind of a weird element to yeah. it but uh yeah alice in wonderland I, it was an okay that, movie that's I mean, why i skipped alice in wonderland because i was just like eh, it's gonna be it did odd. a it did really well in the box office though it had a billion dollars worldwide so it, one it i feel like because that was like that first well, like you said the live action one came out so people were yep. like, "Ooh, we gotta see this and it kind of kicked different. off the whole disney live action adaptation uh when well, i remember the phenomenon. the graphics you know the cgi and all that stuff being really good the it was pretty good and, and cool back yeah. then too um they do a good job with these live action i will say that where in my opinion they do too much of it because it's, it's just like a cash grab at this point but right. it's hollywood what isn't I mean, it started off really great. They start off strong, and then for some reason, the Disney live action ones have petered off. And there but some are, some they are so good. good. Like it's what I, about I, uh, what about Maleficent? Do you ever see that one with yeah, Angelina Jolie? I love that. Yeah. that one also got a sequel as well uh, saw last that year. For free. I actually saw that a year before it came out. Really, that was my anti piracy job. Wow. Yeah, a whole year, and I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't tell anyone about it. And I was like, man, this is so good. Like, I want to tell people about this that movie. one did really well as well um and it had the this the follow-up maleficent mistress of evil yeah i didn't see that one but that one's based I, off i of only sleeping. saw maleficent because i worked it and i got it for free. <laughs> i saw it like five or six times oh wow i got that's paid. way too many to see got paid times. to see it so i'll take i mean it. there you go but that's based off the sleeping beauty villain yeah and then you've got cinderella that they did back in 2015 uh, the Jungle Book in 2016. I watched the, that recently. Jungle, Jungle Book, Book was not too bad. It's I, all right. I didn't think it was it terrible. Definitely but... one that when I saw it in theaters, or when I saw the previews in theaters, I was like, oh, I'm definitely seeing that, and then I never did. And then I watched it, I think, a month or two ago. I was like, that's eh, all right. Um, I don't think they... I don't John know. Goodman is... All of the movies there. that are these live-action Disney ones are based off all of the iconic songs and the, the dances that they do in them, and yeah. I don't really think the live-action adaptations... Do them justice. Got that so wrong, speak. actually. Bill Murray is the bear in the live action. Oh, he is. John yes. Goodman is the animated bear. Yes. Beauty and the Beast was another one, uh, which I thought was not too bad. Uh, I didn't with, see that. The uh, Beast. Emma out. Watson. That was back in 20, 2017. And then Christopher Robin was actually really good with. Uh, so you don't think the singing is as good in the live action one? You think it's better in the animated? I think it's better in the animated ones. I don't know if it's the nostalgia or if I feel it's, like it's cause actually it's just original. better songs or if it is the original It's Because when they're doing it again, it, and that's what I thought about with like Jungle Book. Also, I, like I said, Bill Murray, I don't know. He, just, he didn't do it for me as Baloo. But like when they're singing, it's just, yeah. It, it's I think it's because it's like, okay, I've heard this already. They're just copying it. It seems kind of like a lazy effort, you know. Create new songs. I mean, you, you can't though because if you create a new song, they're like that wasn't in the yeah, original, you're gonna get and heat then for people will get say. fired up and 
These are treasured pieces of Disney's like, it, and that's why I think they movie need to, entertainment. So. I would say too, what they need to do with these movies as they keep making them, make them slightly different, but really toe that line between put some nostalgia in, but not too much, because don't just recreate the animation. But when you're doing some newer parts, and this is what the Jungle Book, some of the parts were too weird. There like was some very the strange giant orangutan things. and like a little too much for me. Yeah, they took the element of bit larger than life, and uh, that's why it's it, so hard yeah. to transpose. Uh, if you're going to do live action adaptations and take, you have to be really true to the source you material. Got to pick your spots and, well of what you're going to stick yeah. to the animation and what you're going to change. And that's why I think a lot of live action adaptations are generally pretty bad because. <laughs> The, the, you have different directors doing them. You have different pieces of, oh, I interpret it this way or I interpret it that way. And then you got to make it fit to a relevant modern time and bring it up to technology. And well, sometimes, and that's a key, too, because a lot of these from, like, the 30s and 40s yeah. is animation. I mean, Cinderella's from, like, the 30s and 40s. And, yeah, Snow White. Um, Snow White as well. Do you, do you know they did a Mary Poppins uh Live action movie, yeah, because Dick Van Dyke is in it. Yeah, I like, didn't shout know out that. To Dick Van Dyke, man. Mary Poppins returns in 2018. Yeah, he's uh, dancing apparently. in it. He's got I, some moves. Dang, that guy is Go Dick Van Dyke. He's like the Betty. He's the male version of Betty White. <laughs> now people are like Betty White. Can't he's still die. alive. Yeah, Dick Van Dyke. He's like the same age or around the same age, and he's just like. I'm living my life and I'm happy. I'm this happy old dude. I'm like 98 years old and oh. he's crushing it, man. He's, just, he's still kicking strong. So they should get together. They should. <laughs> Betty White and Dick Van Dyke. That's a, that's a power couple. They should. That should be they like would a crush really, it at the celebrity scenery. A really great sitcom, you know. Just, oh yeah, uh, wow. The Dick Van Dyke Show meets Golden Girls and Betty White or something. Like do a crossover yeah. revival or yeah, something. Yeah, wow. That <laughs> would be, be great. Well, this is like where the the live action remakes kind of go downhill with like Dumbo and The Lion King. You said you never saw Dumbo. Uh, well, they really didn't do well on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm just gonna take it the word for it. And well, Rod- Dan- <laughs> some of the Rotten Tomatoes, oh man, they they I mean, steered yeah. me wrong. They probably like Sweeney Todd, but Aladdin was pretty good though. Oh, and I love Aladdin. I thought Aladdin was pretty good. I liked Aladdin, well, I'm gonna say that. right now, Aladdin was my favorite. One of the I'm not kidding. One of the best movies I've ever seen. And also, wow. yeah, that's a bold statement there, dude. Will Smith is an amazing. I mean, genie. he does. Crush He's it. better than Robin Williams. Whoa! Yeah. Yes, that is a hugely bold statement. Yes. Man, Will Smith is way better than Robin Williams. Wow. The only thing they missed on they didn't have Gilbert Gottfried as the bird. What uh, bring was, back Gilbert Gottfried? Yeah. He's a great bird. What did you think of him? Like. Because they didn't do the end scene of the genie being having his own family at the end on the boat or whatever. What did you think of that? No, they they did, did. Did they do that in the, in the animated yeah. version? Yeah. Because I saw the animated version, and I don't think they oh, he oh, had children. Oh, in the, in the and, animated version, they didn't yeah, do that? Yeah. No, so, I think that was added. Sorry, yeah, I thought you were talking about In the about live that. action one, what did you think about that? Did I liked you, it. I, I like thought it, it completed the storyline more, and it also... The thing I liked about it, too, and this is also why I like Will Smith in a lot of movies... This is why I like Suicide Squad, and I know you don't like that movie, but I do. Um, that movie had so much potential. I'm just going to say that right now, and it just kind of fell flat. But I'll continue with your well, with, with your thought. Don't though. get me started on all the movies <laughs> you told me to watch. You already just said sucked, that Will so. Smith is better than Robert Williams as the genie, so that's a hot take right here. This Man, is the show about the hottest takes and the best talking points. I didn't say so. he's a better comedian. Which no, I no, in, I, as I, a I genie. won't because I have opinions on that, but there's going to be an uproar if I do. So No, just as a genie. Pleading the fifth on that one. But as a genie, yes, he's better. Here's why I like Will Smith in movies. Because he's such a big star now. If you put him in a movie like Suicide Squad, you have to have it revolve around him in some way. Maybe the whole entire movie, he's not the end-all, be-all. But he is automatically main character no matter who he plays. Yeah. So like in Suicide Squad, he's what Hawkeye. Uh, some, he's like a sniper dude or something. You're, I can't remember. I can't the, remember the name. You're of the, the superhero guy. genius in this. I can't remember the dude's name. It's either this relationship. It's not Deadpool because that's Ryan Reynolds. I think he's it's Hawkeye because uh, I think it's it's uh, the same. It's Deadshot. Yes, it's Deadshot. Deadshot. Yeah, that's his name. He's a sniper dude or whatever. He's like an assassin. Dead. That doesn't sound. Okay, well, <laughs> what I, ruined your... I'll, I'll take your dead shot. <laughs> it is ruined it for you. Quote, quote, unquote, dead shot. But yeah, he, that's a minor character in the Suicide Squad, but in that movie, he's like I mean, yeah, he's prominent. the A-list and they, and they have to talk about his family, and they and he's got a good story because he's kind of a good guy, you know? And they talk about his daughter and blah, blah, blah. Same with the genie. 
they get into his backstory more because with the animated one we really didn't really get a backstory and i thought it was cool that people love the genie i mean yeah i thought i thought Aladdin was so now probably the, it, there's more heartfelt more emotion towards it was the, the best out of all of the live action adaptations just a and, great and, and again what i was saying for how how they can change it and make these better is they can change it slightly where look you added a storyline it's not a huge oh this throws this plot off course but it adds that good element it adds it ties everything up adds a heartfelt message in there whatever yeah. you know what did you think of mulan did you watch that one no i'm not that rich no <laughs> you have disney plus now so. because okay here's where oh, i'm gonna draw the line it, with though, disney plus disney plus i pay a subscription it's a fair subscription it's like 7.99 it's a great price i love that price for subscriptions but I don't want to pay an extra thirty. Was this OnlyFans? Well, like, what, what am I paying a subscription and then? Oh a, yeah, you want to see this exclusive content? You got to give us more money. It's no. a one. And, it's a one and done chess trial thing that they did with it. So you won't have to pay it anymore. But if it, Mulan was live action was pretty good. Well, I thought I thought the try. I thought that ended in December, so it's free now. Uh, no. So like they're not going to do it going forward. Is what I'm saying. Like they won't yeah. make you pay thirty extra dollars for a movie. So like right now. Oh, yeah. or, or Mulan, though, I still have to pay. <laughs> they're only doing it for Mulan. There's no other movies right, that they're right. okay. making you pay, actually. But after Mulan, people gripe too much. Uh, well, I, so then they're going to... Okay, I'm talking about the movie itself where... Right, I got you. I got you. We got off on a wild, wild well, tangent okay, for that. So, so. so, Mulan, I still have to pay 30 bucks till December, correct? I, I guess, yeah. and then That doesn't sound confident. I... <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten off topic on this. I'm talking about the movie itself. I want to know because I'll go watch it. I, I don't know if that's true. They're, that's the oh. only movie that they're doing it for, though. So Also, bring back Eddie Murphy as Mushu. A huge miss with that uh, one. Well, if there there was no dragon in the movie, which was kind of lame. Let's, dragon. Uh, I love that. That's just my favorite quote. Also, thanks to Donny Osmond, man. He liked my tweet. <laughs> oh, really? I, I said, I'm not watching Mulan and paying 30 bucks unless Donny Osmond is singing I'll Make a Man Out of You. That's a fire tweet. Got wow. a ton of likes. One of those likes was Donny Osmond himself. There you go. Shout out Donny Osmond. <laughs> See, that's another reason I want to watch Donny Osmond, boy, then. Boy, Donny, man. He's just man. a little bit rock and roll. Well, maybe uh, Donny Osmond can help uh, uh, Disney get their live-action remakes and adaptations together. Cause Donny Osmond. It was Eddie sorely Murphy. lacking. Lucy Liu should have been Mulan. That's what I'm saying. I like Lucy Liu. I agree. But, uh, yeah, so that, those are all the Disney live-action remakes. I mean, there's a couple more coming up with Cruella. They're making The Little Mermaid. Uh, Snow White's coming Wait, up. Cruella, they're making just a Cruella movie? Yep, just oh. like, an, like an origin story. Who is uh, Meryl Streep playing Cruella? Or? Uh, no, it's some other actress. I don't See, know. See, all these misses, man. I know. Lilo and Stitch. I am really excited about well, the... No, Her- no, no. I mean, don't they're going to do, gonna do that. No, so. That's stupid. I am excited about the Hercules one, though. I think that would should be pretty cool. So Did, I, didn't I they do, do Hercules already? Not a live action one, not like a live action Disney. Adaptation. I thought The Rock was Hercules. No, he was like Conan the Barbarian oh. or something else. I swear else. they made a Hercules movie like ten years ago or no. eight years ago. No, I don't think so. But uh, I'm looking this up. I think. All right, you look that up. We're gonna move on to a different segment of the show. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, some of the the board game live action adaptations. Uh, did you ever see the movie Battleship? With uh, no. Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna's in it? Well, yeah, I'm seeing Rihanna's it now. in it, yes. Wow. So this is how far the depths of Hollywood will go to make movies and to grab a quick buck. Uh, they've, they've made movies off of Battleship. Oh, by the way, bam, 2014. <laughs> oh, it's not the Disney one, though. And guess who plays Hercules? Yeah, it's The Rock. Dwayne but... The Rock Johnson. <laughs> It's not like the Disney like one with them singing not and what everything. I said. So singing, oh. the rock, hey, the Rock can sing. Okay, <laughs> uh, but yes. Uh, so there's been board game live action adaptation movies. Uh, there's theme park ones as well. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean. They made an entire franchise off eight of eight movies on a ride. <laughs> did they do eight movies off of it? I think they got up to eight. No way. If they're not at eight. They're going to. I mean, they they will be it. I thought there was only five or six last time I checked. Maybe, yeah, maybe they signed on to do eight. Then. I don't know, something like that. But they made over like four billion dollars. They're, they're doing eight for and, sure. It's, oh, I know. It's outrageous. There's it's there's like... never an end to that. But how how awesome is that to have turn 
a theme park ride into a multi-billion dollar movie franchise with like Johnny Depp and Keira uh, Knightley. Keira Knightley. Penelope and, Cruz. Uh, Penelope Cruz is in it, yes. Uh, Orlando Bloom as well. Orla- yeah, how could I forget him? Um, you ever see the movie Tomorrowland as well? Tomorrowland? This is like, yeah, it's a movie oh. based off of another live action or uh, theme park ride from Disney. But uh, was that George I, Clooney in it? Uh, it was like I don't ten years ago or that. something. It I know the a, festival in Belgium. It was terror, <laughs> not the not the music festival. If it's, if it's based off that, I'll watch it. No, it was uh, do, do, it was do, a do, terrible. Do, do, do. Uh, George Clooney it was is very, very overrated. Bad. Oh, another hot take. Really? Just full of hot takes. You don't today. like George Clooney? Yeah, yeah, no. I just rewatched all the Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's Twelve movies. I like those. those movies are great. I like those, but there's a there's a isn't Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven? Brad Pitt's in it. Like. Bernie yeah. Mac's in it. R.I.P. Bernie Mac. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see. Is it Ben Affleck in it? No, Matt Damon's in it. Matt Damon. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. There's a bunch of Everyone A-list stars and everything. Yeah, and that's the thing. So it's like George Clooney. I feel like I've never seen a movie where it's him and a bunch of nobodies, and then I'm like, wow, he carried them. It's just him and a bunch of other stars, and I'm like, yeah. He's- He's a good no big way. actor. Watch uh, Up, Up in, in the, the Air. air. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that movie's fantastic. George Clooney's a powerhouse actor. He hasn't wow. been in a whole lot lately, but so he he's the genie Will Smith. You're saying? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but he's he's a great actor. I think he uh, he definitely carries a lot of movies. I so. feel like people just like him because he's like a good looking old guy. He's I mean, like the easy answer when you're like, like name an actor. People will be like George Clooney. You know, it's just it's the easy like actor. But if they're like name three George Clooney movies, people will couldn't do it. I guarantee. You. Can you name three George Clooney movies? Batman, <laughs> Up in the Air, Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Oh, though that's a fantastic movie right there. Um, that is a very underrated movie. I don't know if I can name another one, but that, so there you go. There's my list. Tomorrow Tomorrowland. Land. There you go. That's my. Fourth. He's in Gravity. Oh, I hated that movie. When I was talking about space movies or space anything, like, Gravity wasn't that. Don't great. make. It was like a copy of Interstellar because it came out right after that. It did, and yeah, they they make these space movies way too dramatic. The um, the Monuments Men. Do you ever see that? Great movie. Oh yeah, that is good. Yeah, The yeah, Ides John of Goodman. March. Awesome movie. The Descendants. The American. Michael Clayton. Um, no. Man, George Clooney just can't just Michael Clayton. Well, yeah, Michael Clayton, football player. No, not the football player. <laughs> you know, you you were naming football players uh, today. It was, so. <laughs> but uh, well, let's see what else we got on here. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. so we got uh, movies that were made off of uh, like toys, like action figures and stuff. Uh, yeah, GI Joe. Do you ever see those movies with Channing Tatum? No. Oh man, those are bad. Bruce Willis in the truck. He is. Yeah, Bruce Willis is in oh, there the too. Blood pressure's a little high. I just remember that. That scene. movie is so. Those, but there's two movies. There's GI Joe, Joe, and then there's kid. the Rise of Cobra, and then the Return of Cobra, and then it's like the Expendables. It's just yeah. like let's throw a bunch of stupid action people in there. I'm like I'm not gonna watch that. The crappy thing is they killed Channing Tatum off, and he's like the main character, and they he's the main character. Yeah, they, they killed a, him off. They could have gotten a lot tougher, dude. For GI Joe, that's what I'm saying. Well, the, Channing Tatum, The Rock is in it, and so like of once, like the they figured like, well, The Rock's in this movie, we can make him the central point for like the second one, and so they killed off Channing Tatum. <laughs> it's like The Rock is now Channing Tatum. Go dance some more. We don't need you. <laughs> go get on Magic Mike number seven or something, <laughs> and stay out of our way. Um, and then you have a uh, Transformers where all those yeah. uh, Michael the, Bay. Flicks the first and... couple were good, and then they're just like, this is too much. I like the first two. Uh, the third, actually, I like the one with uh, what was the one that took place in Chicago. So the first three were pretty good. Yeah. The ones with Marky Mark were pretty bad. He's, he's another one, man. The more I watch him, the more I'm just like, eh, he's not, not great. In the, he, so he's also an actor who I think is way overrated, mm-hmm. and he's in some bad movies. And he lately. tries to be like a tough guy, and it's just like, I mean, he could bench anything, but like. I don't know. I just his two a.m. workout and, plan and yeah, everything. Oh, like I wake up at two a.m. I eat six yolks of eggs or whatever, and then work out for four to hours. C list movies. He's been in some bad movies. Pain and, those, and Gain is an awful movie. That movie also sucks. The Rock. Him and The Rock are very similar. We're like <laughs> he is. they'll just do whatever. And and also the other thing about Marky Mark that annoys me, they'll always be like, "Hey, we need a real Boston guy." 
you go do this and do a super cheesy Boston accent. I mean, Patriots Day was really, really good, though. That's the one about the Boston bombing. So that was oh, a, I didn't see that. That was a really good Yeah, he's movie. got some good ones. I'm not, I'm not ripping on him. Like, he's he's a fine actor, but it's not everything he does is going to be amazing. He's not going to win Oscars. He's just going to do some like, I just good hope movies. they don't make any more Transformers movies because I'm tired of... Uh, it's I, enough. I, I, I got queasy in the last one I saw. It was too much explosions and spinning 360 <laughs> cameras and, oh, that, okay. and all I that. Say. I was just like, what? There's just too much going on, man. I yeah, don't feel I, good right now. That happens to me. I can't do too much of the, like, you know, moving around. And when, when you make five movies yeah, off enough. of a like, toy, an action figure right. from the 80s, then... Hey, you're really reaching for the depths of, I guess, Hollywood content. Well, when and... the when the main characters start dropping off, you're like, okay, we're, we're done. Like, I mean, yeah, Shia LaBeouf left, and Megan he Fox went crazy, gone. and Megan Fox got fired. And the only highlight of that franchise was uh, Rosie Huntington Whitley. So, and no one knows was, who that is. That was the Victoria's <laughs> Secret supermodel in uh, the third movie. So <laughs> you're like, you know what? We need another hot girl because. Well, I mean, that's Megan all Fox. Michael Bay is. He's like, let's have gratuitous scenes. <laughs> he's like, of, he, he's um, like Adam Sandler. He's like, it's going to be me and just someone hot next yeah. to me every movie. That's all the plot is going to be. That's exactly what it is. Where's Jennifer Aniston? Okay, I'm on board. All right, let's see. we got video game live a- action adaptations now. Uh, we got Mortal Kombat. You ever see that one? No. Any of those franchises? No, I was a Tekken guy back in the day. Well, they, ha- they do have a live action Tekken movie. Yeah, it looked dumb. <laughs> it's gonna ruin Tekken for me. It's gonna ruin my memories. Man. No, it's already out. It came out in like the nineties or no. Like I know if I see that. it, it's gonna oh. ruin my memories of playing the game, and I'm just gonna be like, this is cheesy. well, don't worry, they're gonna remake it coming up here soon, so I'm you'll sure. have another chance at it. But yeah, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Assassin's Creed as well, which yeah. was a really really bad live yeah, action no, I, adaptation. I haven't seen Gears well, who, of War. Gears of War, Silent Hill was really really bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't touch those video game movies. What about the Super Mario Brothers from <laughs> like the '80s or something? They made a live action. Yeah, movie. they made like three live action movies off the Super Mario Brothers. Who was in it? I, it's random. That sounds awful. It was. They're probably some that of the worst. That sounds like a movies. comedy. <laughs> they are. It is a. That comedy. sounds like when they made the Flintstones in live action. Oh man, I didn't even know they made. Uh, did they? When John did they Goodman. Make the, oh, yeah, that's yeah, John Fred Goodman. Flintstone. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Super it Mario sounds, Brothers. Oh, that I need to. That uh, that sounds terrible. I did like the Street Fighter adaptation that they did with Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh man, that one was that's entertaining. He he is <laughs> the rock of the nineties for sure. <laughs> he is uh yeah not too great, but I I like that movie. And, and there was Doom, which also was Dwayne Johnson, the Rock, and Carl Urban was in that movie, with randomly who's uh. He play, he's in The Boys. He's also Judge Dredd. And he's also uh, the Doc from uh, what's uh, Star Trek, the the remakes with Chris Pine. I haven't seen any of those movies, oh, so man. it makes sense. All right, I, can't, I can't help <laughs> you then. So, uh, Prince yep. of Persia. Here with, it is, 1993. I just want to see who's in this. Like, who could possibly be in it? Who could possibly? Do you know who could do it? Who doesn't care about ruining his career at any given moment? Who is it? My boy, John Leguizamo. He's in that movie? Yep. The no Sloth. Way. Sid the Sloth. Oh, boy. He's, I got to give him props, though, because, like, he'll he's another guy. He'll do anything. It doesn't matter. He's still big. He's. I feel like he hasn't really – that was a joke. He hasn't really ruined his <laughs> career. And he's also really diverse because he does a lot of, like, Hispanic, you know, like, Spanish-speaking stuff. And then he'll do like comedies, but then he'll do whatever. I mean, but he always does a good job. He puts an effort. So, wow, yeah, I didn't know he was in it. Half the I movies on so. my list, though, are Dwayne the Rock Johnson hey, ones. John Leguizamo, you can play a Italian guy, right? Go ahead, You're right? Yeah, <laughs> I was also, uh, you know, Michael Pena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, every si- I'm, no, no joke. Every single movie I've watched in my life with Michael Pena, I'm like. Hey, they got John Leguizamo in this movie, and everyone always looks at me and they're like, "What? Nope, that's it's the, not him. Not like, him at all." Isn't that, uh, so, speaking nope. of Michael Pena and live action adaptations, they're doing a live action version of Tom and Jerry, and Michael Pena is in the movie. <laughs> the trailer, I'm not even kidding you, it literally released today on whenever who, who we're recording is he, this. Jerry is he dressed like a cat? Uh, no, he is a hotel manager. Of course, uh, I feel like he always plays something like that. This movie, and I'm gonna think it's John Leguizamo. This movie looks it now. far and 
f- like beyond the worst movie I think ever like created. Mario and Luigi. That's ever, why I get it mixed up because they ever do, made. They do similar, and they're also like, "Hey, I need a Puerto Rican guy." Like, but it's a Hispanic guy. Pull him. It's in. not all live action. It's Tom and Jerry are cartoons. So it's like oh, no. Space Jam That's live the worst. action, oh. and then the rest of the actors and the scenes and everything are like, like real the, okay. world stuff. Stop making those movies. It's, it's so stupid. bad. Stop it. It's the Looney Tunes come oh, to life, so Tom and Jerry style. And Michael Terrible. Pena's in it, and see, he's in a, that's why I get him mixed up because he just doesn't even care. He's just like, you know what? <laughs> sure, I'm pretty this sure he's my just, career. Sure, whatever you pay He's me? just All doing right. the movie because he thinks it's fun, and his kids probably he's like, like it. He's like, he's like Jamie Kennedy on your podcast. <laughs> just hey, man, we need, you doing anything? The non-existent. Nope. All right. You don't care that this might like ruin you? Okay, hop on. Not, right. well, we may or may not pay you, but hey, you'll you'll be on something. I think that's a good segue into why our second segment of the show is to what what is the purpose of live action adaptations and do they have a place in Hollywood? And I think there's a lot of back and forth that goes into it because a lot of the times it's based off of animated versions of shows or video games or I guess, I don't know, beloved nostalgia from the 80s and 90s that yeah. they're remaking and adapting into, well, into like shows. Well, like I said, they're going with the audience. So, like, the kids that, oh, hey, you played with Transformers or G.I. Joes back in the day. True. Now you're old and have kids. You can watch a movie about it and remember things. Yeah, I think it's good that they, they do some of these because it brings back an element of nostalgia that remakes or revivals really just can't achieve. Because if mm-hmm. you're going to bring back a show... It's not going to be the same as the original or something uh, like, you know, the original animated version or something like that. You're going to have updated technology and so forth. But it doesn't always translate into the big screen very well with budgetary constraints and not having a good director on board. I'm looking at you, M. Night Shyamalan, (laughs) for all of your live action adaptations. Also, stop making cameos in your movies. Oh, You're yeah. not Quentin Tarantino. He does that. Have you noticed that? He does, yeah. He's always in there. It's like, hey, who's that Indian guy in there? Oh, it's M. Night Shyamalan. He's always riding himself in the movie in some point. And I that's like, I watched, pretty douchey. I so. watched Sixth Sense recently, and of course he's Great the doctor. Movie. Oh, yes, he is the doctor. Although it kind of kind of fits, you know. I mean, it works, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, like, so some, Sadly, most of these live-action adaptations don't work, and it's mainly because... You don't. You're off of so many different constraints, and you try and cram a whole bunch into the movies that, you know, was an entire TV show or was, I guess, a board game or something. Yeah. But you're trying to condense it in a two-hour time slot, and it doesn't really work very well. So, well, I think too they need to pick and choose also when they're ma- when they're deciding which ones to make the adaptation. For example, Mario and Luigi amazing that's still a thing too much too cheesy no there's a line if if it's too weird don't even attempt you know i mean and i know you could say it with like transformers Tom and jerry <laughs> right don't it's too do it weird. it doesn't need it like just leave it alone it's like we talked about like stepbrothers like movies that don't need sequels some just don't just leave it as is some are just great animations from the 50s or whatever like that don't do it. I agree. Because you're not going to do it well. There's because, no like, way what, you can make that movie good. What it's made gonna be stupid. a lot of the originals so good, if it's animated or if it's a video game or whatever, was it was an original content. It was original characters I don't and mind music with the, and score. With the board games or the um, toys, I don't mind that as much because like there was no real storyline. So you can True. take that and run. And that's kind of cool. Don't do 50 like G.I. Joe or Transformers. <laughs> make one or two and then end it or just make one i would say that's the rule of thumb make one but i like it because it's creative they can really bring some of these to life Uh you know so like good one aaron (laughs) like that but like there's other ones where if they're these cartoons you got to be really careful with how you do it and i just think there's some where it's like if you can make a quality storyline around it but not make it too weird just they got to be careful though, because yeah. even like Space Jam, I love Space Jam for the nostalgia, but man, that, that's a weird movie. I mean, when you look at the plot, you're like, and it's the, pretty and weird. the fact they're making a second one, LeBron, oh god, 
That's just stop. not going to be great. <laughs> That's going to be so cheesy. I think the fear with a lot of the live so action bad. adaptations is the key details that made the original so well liked are going to be changed and audited to fit, I guess, more relevant and updated in modern times. You got to appeal to the mainstream masses, so to speak. So a lot of the times, like a uh, really great uh, Nickelodeon show, Avatar The Last Airbender, was remade by M. Night Shyamalan into a live action <laughs> movie. Uh, which was a terrible. It was the, one of the worst movies ever I'm amazed created. He did that? I didn't know he did that movie. I don't. I thought he only made creepy, scary movies. I, he it's, it's like you know what? I'm making. I got a kids no words movie. for it. So, <laughs> but the the original animated show was like one of the best animated shows of all time, and it had so many overarching. That elements. is a bold statement. It, it really wow. was. This is an episode of bold. This claims. is a lot of hot takes here. So Ooh, we're on all the ledges today. But like that show was way ahead of its time for being an kid show from the early 2000s that you watched on Nick at Night or Nickelodeon yeah. and they tried well, to wasn't remake it originally it in, a Japanese show it has a lot of like uh, eastern elements and influences it's an, from is it. that an American show but it is an American show oh yeah. really interesting mm-hmm. uh, they have the, the show itself is actually really really great but the live action adaptation was so bad because one he tried to fit too much into the movie and it was based off of you know 25 episodes crammed into two hours so that was already a challenge. And you've got the, I don't know, like all the special effects and the fighting scenes and their special powers in the show did not translate into yeah. live action. I'm sure this man must have been working with like $20,000 of a budget because the actors and the special effects were so bad. Paying with his own money. I'm pretty sure he funded it like, with his own money. Hey, I want to make uh, The Last Airbender. Nope, don't want to do it. Okay, no one wants to help me on this. <laughs> I'm just going to do it myself. I'm using my six cents money on this That's one. That's pretty much how it is. But a lot of the... Now, and now Netflix is remaking it into a Netflix TV show, live oh. action show. But the whole... So they're trying it again. <laughs> they're trying it again, but a lot of the go. controversy is that you know the original writers for the show, they exited, so they're not having any creative powers over it. So... That happens a lot with these live action adaptations is you have the original writers or directors or whatever it is from the video games or the shows and then they're pushed out because Hollywood wants to push their own agenda with mm-hmm. it and I think that can be pretty dangerous when you're talking about really lauded and you know celebrated shows like this or video games or I don't know animated movies or whatever it is mm-hmm. you don't really get the true uh, I guess representation of the content or the movie itself on the big screen. Well, so, when you make them too many times like that, where there's different versions, it, it dilutes it. I think. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. And animation is far more flexible too. Like you get the ability to flex your creative muscles and stuff. Yeah, you can do I mean, weird things. Yeah, and, on you know, comics, things and that stuff. would never happen. That's where the animation's for. Yeah, and comic strips and everything. They're not constrained by what you can afford to do. It's only what what you can draw, mm-hmm. and you know what you know what what you can fit on the page, right. and so bringing that into a live action area, I think that's dangerous for Hollywood though, because like you get into a routine of remakes, adaptations, sequels, revivals, all that kind of stuff, you run the risk of having very few or no original content at all, right? Because no, I feel I, like everything it's just now too much of a like, rabbit hole, and I, and that's where I'm saying if they're gonna do it. Make sure it really makes sense and it really would translate on screen, and then you can make it. But we don't need every single cartoon made into live action just for the sake of making a live action. It's it's gonna ruin it. And then, like like I said, with like video game movies, I don't see them. I will not watch them. I know no, it's because be they're usually all really really right. bad. So it's like if they keep doing that, I'm not gonna watch. And this has happened too, where I won't go see these uh, live action ones in theaters except in Aladdin I think that was the last I actually think that was the last movie I saw in a theater uh, that was like over a year ago uh, yeah it was, it was like January February no it came out in 2019 so that was over a year ago oh okay wow yeah that, that might have been something like that but so, I mean go back let's go back to our list for all the video game movies like right. Mortal Kombat terrible Assassin's Creed that's even what I mean with, so if they like, keep doing that it's like I'm just not going to see any of these because I'm yeah. like nope they're all stupid I mean all the horrible resident evil movies the games are great we have made that movie money man <laughs> we the amount have. we've talked about that movie on this podcast you're welcome paul ws anderson and <laughs> what's her name mila jovovich or whatever talking about that movie we should get some royalty checks or something off that but that, uh, another one that i all seven of those movies are absolute garbage so 
And that's not the Kate Beckinsale one, right? Uh, no, that's Underworld. Okay. That's, which see, I did it again. I, I keep think thinking. was translated into a video game off of the movie or vice versa. I don't know, but yeah. either way, they were pretty bad. So. <laughs> but like all of the movies, like the Rampage movie with uh, the, <laughs> the Rock. White gorilla. <laughs> oh, God, that movie was so bad. I can't believe that they actually made that. And that was based off of like an arcade game from like Oh yeah. That's a deep right. cut from, wow. from like nineteen eighty four. I remember the arcade game at, at a movie theater. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these games are arcade games like Tekken, Mortal Kombat, yeah. yep. uh Street Fighter. Yep. Those are all really, really bad movies. So like Yeah, and I feel like they make them too because they're just like, Well, people will see this because they're gonna like that. I remember playing a rampage a million years ago. I'll see the movie, you know. They, it, and, it, and they can do a poor job of it because they know they're going to make money off of it somehow. So why do you think, like, all, why is it all the video games or, like, have r- really bad live-action adaptation movies or just in general? Like, why well, are they generally so Like so you terrible? said, it, it's animation. So you play a video game because you're doing things no matter what type of video game it, it is. Even sports video games where you have real people in there. You're doing things that you can't do in real life. You can't see in real life. It's a video game. It's, it's. I wouldn't be surprised if they did a, yeah. a live action adaptation of sports games like Madden or Two K or FIFA <laughs> or something, and just like, like this is the new the future of movies it, in Hollywood. It, they're they're doing live like, sports. You're throwing the ball seventy yards. <sighs> the sports stuff. movies are pretty fun though. Like I I do like some of those, but I mean, yeah, that that is kind of a like a. Like uh, most adaptation like, in their own way, those most movies. of like the sports movies aren't really bad. Like it's weird. Like they usually you're, do a good job. You're telling the actors to play out like a historic game, or mm-hmm. it's a scripted like. Well, thing I feel that's like because there's and, there's consequences because if you screw up, those are live people, and you're almost like disrespecting their legacy. That's true. You know, if you watch like um, Hoosiers, yeah, Hoosiers, or, uh, like some of those, and some of those are so glory road or like they're so monumental you know to yeah. like monumental moments in history and important moments in history and a lot of the athletes are still around or these families you know it would, it would be like like bradley cooper making american sniper and just and being it's all like, goofy and it's like has <laughs> like slapstick humor and he or was something like, he was like the hangover character yeah <laughs> Uh oh, he's Phil from the Hangover. We screwed up here. <laughs> Where's Doug? He calls his wife. He's yeah. on. The, he's on the ledge. Like, yep, honey, we screwed up again. We screwed up again. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I I feel like live action. Like, like it would just be a slap in the face, and, they, and like it would. Just, they would hate it. So I feel like with sports movies, it's like okay, we got to make this. Yeah, maybe it's gonna be a little cheesy. Because, like, you know, you have to. And you got to make it a feel-good story and blah, blah, blah. But you can't make it too, like, okay. Like, there can't be those moments where you're like, all right, that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of dramatized and uh, exaggerated yeah, moments. Yeah, you can exaggerate and... a little bit, but it's like, okay, come on. Don't make this, like, super, yeah. like, out there. Whereas video games, when they make the movies off a of video game, they're trying so hard. And it's like, okay, that's just stupid. Like, I want to see if you're going to make – live-action adaptations have their place in – entertainment and movies and tv shows and stuff but if you're gonna make them you have to stick directly to the source material whether it's character models or plot or just mechanics of the show itself from either the animated version or the the video game version or the board game or whatever you gotta do better than just having a half-assed attempt of all right let's just throw this together and have a quick cash grab and Mm -hmm. uh hope for the best and yeah they're I, I really hope that or they do like that. Or like Lion King where it was all CGI. I That's wanna, not live I, action. I don't want to watch that. Yeah. Like, no. If if you have to do all CGI, that's not worth adapting. No, it is not. Uh, whereas the Aladdin, some of it was CGI, but like most of it was actors. and it was... Yeah, you have real people in there. I mean, I will say, even Will Smith plays like a human version of the character. You don't right. have to CG him and stuff. Uh, like, yeah, I... I liked that. He's only the blue version. Jafar wasn't as scary, though. I will say that's the one knock Jafar on that sucked, movie. Yeah, they could have. He, he just he wasn't as intimidating. They could have brought somebody guy. else in on for it. But uh, I'm sure they'll make Aladdin two or something live action. No, here. no. I'm sure it's such a good movie. Just keep it as. I'm it. sure they're gonna keep them pumping out here, Aaron. So it's it's a never ending trope. But um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. So got any other? tidbits or thoughts for live action adaptations or 
um, ways it might change Hollywood. So I at first was not excited about Little Mermaid, but now I'm kind of excited. Uh, I think I'll see it. I I think it'll be fine. I, I mean, think, I think Emma was... Stone would have been a better Little Mermaid. So uh, that's oh, hot. I agree. To finish off the hot takes, you agree <laughs> with that? I like Emma Stone. Yeah, I think she wouldn't she been... be a good Ariel? I think she'd be a great Ariel. She's a redhead. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was so upset that they cast a uh, a black actress for that one. It makes sense because it's like, okay, here's here's my take on it. And I know it's a big controversy, whatever, but like, I get it because it's isn't it, it's based in like the Caribbean, right, or like the islands. Yeah, like, it's literally like sense. in the like, yeah the Caribbean islands yeah, or something. Like it, I I understand that. However, going back to like what you said, the the animation that's what the characters look like. Make the characters look like the animation. Yeah. Because I would say this is for nostalgia purposes, and there's a lot of I'm all for modernizing there, certain so things, but it I don't know. I'm not going to harp on that, but there's other instances where it, there, there's changing things just for the sake of changing things right. in all of these adaptations, and there's, I, there's just no need to do that. I, like if you're gonna if there's a an Asian character in the movie, right, or in the in the uh, animated version, cast an Asian character to play them. Right. Then. If there's a white person, cast a white person. If there's, you know, just make it as true to the source material as you can. Although they did take Will Smith, who is definitely oh. not Middle Eastern, yeah, and tried true. to cast him as a Middle Eastern guy. Well, it was kind of funny. <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> or or kind of <laughs> kind of like kind of like Shaq when he's playing Kazam. Oh, <laughs> Shaq's play, playing that's a not genie. a true live action adaptation, Aaron. That's a that's a satire in and of itself. Oh so. man, that movie! Ooh, Shaq is a genie. Uh, he tries to do the he, he's doing the accent. I so. think the moral of the story is just keep it as true as you can, and then that's it. Or but, else you'll uh, look like Kazam. <laughs> yes, you'll pull Kazam numbers at the box office. When's that sequel coming out? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully no time soon because <laughs> Shaq's got enough on his plate, so he doesn't need to do anything else. And. He, he's he's not the rock okay let's let's be real here <laughs> he's not gonna stoop that low. yeah the rock will stoop that low uh but if you like that we talk about in this episode we want to continue the conversation afterwards hit us up on twitter on youtube and every social media let us know what your thoughts are what are some of your favorite live action adaptations from this list and uh who do you think needs to what do you think needs to happen for hollywood to make successful live action adaptations going forward Share with us your thoughts on our social handles or email us to keep up to date with all the best coverage from everything related to sports, music, movies, and more. Check out our Twitter at Weekendology Pod. Our sports handle is at Weekendology Sports. And our weekend, Weekendology Entertainment handle is at Weekendology ENT. Don't forget to check out our last episode where we talk about TV show revivals on our short list of shows that we need to see comebacks for. You might even have some callbacks to other things from other episodes like Frasier or Dexter or other stuff. Wow, that's very uh, trying to be non-specific. Opposite ends of the spectrum with those two shows. (laughs) Frasier and Dexter. I think the only thing they have in common is they're named after the the titles are named after the main characters. (laughs) one name. It stops there. (laughs) One word names of the shows then. But uh, yeah, check out that last episode. I think that was pretty cool. It just just got me thinking, what if there was like an evil (laughs) Frasier? He starts murdering. He murders Niles. Oh, that would be hilarious. He murders Bulldog. Oh, man. He's so angry. Oh, Man, he murders Eddie. <laughs> this episode has gotten really, really weird. So <laughs> thanks for sticking with us if you've made it this far. Uh, Weekendology is brought to you by the Big Red World. Uh, go check them out on Twitter at Big Red Social, and their website is BigRedWorld.org as well. And they might not have anything to talk about, but they're still going to show up. They're still going to show up because that's what they do. Just bring you content. And that's what we do is bringing you content. Yeah. You never, never stop. Except for next week when we take a break off or a week off <laughs> due well, to the holiday. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving, but uh, turn thanks. tune in next week when we'll uh, talk about Evil Frazier. <laughs> we'll talk about hypothetical shows that need to happen. Oh man! Show number one, Evil Frazier. <laughs> show number two, a good version of Dexter. <laughs> just a good ending. Right? Yeah, just a good ending for Dexter. <laughs> Uh, well, that's it. Uh, check us out on all forms of social media. Uh, check us out on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts as well. Uh, we've got new episodes every Friday. So uh, until next time, have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll be back the week after, and uh, we'll see you then. Mm-hmm.